Hello everyone, I'm Vedant, I'm a fourth year PhD candidate from Georgia Tech. I will be presenting our work on the role of mobile use in the daily practices of remote information work. This research was conducted during my internship with Microsoft Research. This paper was written under the guidance and mentorship of my co-authors, Shane, Adam, and Chamsi. The hybrid workforce is slowly becoming more and more normal than ever. We find both the demand and the supply for it has increased. Since people are not in the office anymore, it is getting harder to understand how they're really achieving their work. Therefore, it's also becoming difficult to support it. Traditional offices have always been very consistent and they reinforce certain norms of behavior, but those norms are now changing, especially when it comes to the intermingling between work and non-work tasks. Remote work itself is known to have many different pros and cons, but one key selling point is flexibility. Flexibility is tied to mobility because a worker can now work from anywhere at any time. And one artifact that supports this kind of flexibility is the mobile. Now, a mobile can be a double-edged sword. On one hand, it can improve productivity, but on the other hand, it also risks distractions. In terms of the firm itself, there is a lot of evidence, early evidence, when it comes to the impact of mobiles and communication devices on an organization. However, the mobile phone itself has changed since those early studies. Mobiles are no longer only communication devices. Moreover, the worker has also changed. So we really need to understand what does a flexible workday look like? The aim of this study is to use the mobile device as an artifact to uncover these practices. And with that, we hope to improve overall worker experiences by helping them reach both their work and non-work goals. This paper compiles a set of results from a robust mixed method study. First, we conducted a survey of 118 information workers to understand the perceptions of mobile use and reported practices. Then we conducted a behavior logging study of 23 participants to describe these activities in a naturalistic setting. Lastly, we also capture accounts described in an exit interview to understand the rationale behind these different activities. Our behavior logging study was conducted using privacy compliant and human centered processes. The data was logged locally and was explicitly shared by the participants only after they had de-identified the da data and labeled it and completely reviewed any information that was coming to us, the researchers. Throughout this process, they were completing daily surveys and at the end of two weeks, they came back for an exit interview. During this exit interview, we visualized the participants' own daily behaviors. Here you're seeing an example of one such day where we distinguish between work and non-work mobile usage. The visualization provided additional context to their behaviors, such as the state of their PC, any interruptions they got, the proximity to, to their PC as well as their home. The computational analysis that we discussed in the paper primarily use mixed effect models. Through this approach, we can determine significant differences between mobile users for work and non-work during working hours. Let's get to our main findings and learn more about the integration of mobile use into work practices. In the survey, individuals perceived an increase in mobile use during the work. We went to test this out empirically. From our behavior logging, we found that mobile use throughout the overall day was not significantly different from what was reported in prior studies. However, we did see a notable difference between our results and prior work when we measured the mobile use only during work hours. This initial finding is meant to motivate why it's important to study mobile use and remote work in the first place, as it indicates some sort of blurring of work-life boundaries, which was not the case prior to remote work becoming a normal thing. Next, we found that overall mobile tasks for both work and non-work were short tasks. They were micro, but they differed in their initiation and their motivation. Mobile use could be to react to external work tasks or to self-stimulate oneself for digital respites. In terms of the micro tasks, we find the reaction to notifications to be almost twice as fast as attending to some sort of non-work task. We reconfirm this analysis by holding out instances of applications that need immediacy by design, such as authenticators. But we still found that the reactions to work notifications to be much faster, which probably reflects some, some amount of diligence even when workers are remote. On the other hand, non-work tasks were self-initiated. Oftentimes, these were ways to take digital breaks from the work tasks on the PC. We also found that workers actually took longer to resume those work tasks on the PC after engaging in mobile use for non-work. Now, 
on one hand, this could be the disruptive effect of the phone itself. However, remember these tasks were largely self-initiated. So it could also just be reflecting the lack of urgency on the tasks on the PC when the worker chooses to go into a state of digital respite. So from a design point of view, our finding actually suggests to look beyond digital restriction. Penalizing or blocking non-work activities during work actually risks new compensatory behaviors. Instead, we should consider designs of workplace intelligence that recommend these quick breaks during flexible work and embrace the fact that these micro breaks, these digital breaks, are natural to flexible work. Our next finding discusses mobile phones in terms of their physical context. First, we found that even in remote work, workers were using their mobile devices for work while at home. In the survey, workers indicated both short and long occasions in which they use their mobiles to stay connected to work. On studying that behavior through the logs, we could confirm that work activities on the phone were more likely to occur when the worker was sensed to be away from their PC. For non-work, we actually saw the complementary result. We found that non-work was more likely when a worker was at their workstation. Many participants described this to be a way to get away from the, or rather get through the garbage hours or the dead time that could be in between two meetings or they could be waiting for some code to compile. So from a design point of view, while we understand that digital breaks are powerful, we're also getting a sense that from our results that workers have an opportunity to be physically taking a break as well. For instance, as you can see in the log data here, that the worker takes breaks to fill up gaps between their PC activity. An intelligent system could actually nudge the worker to take a stroll during the time which they're trying to fill up. And that might be able to give the worker a more healthier life than what they're currently sticking to in terms of their sedentary habits. To conclude, our work intends to provide evidence that will inform the design of better remote work experiences. I already spoke about some of these design implications through this talk, but many other opportunities remain to be explored. Our paper also discusses the societal implications of these kinds of systems and discusses ways forward. I highly encourage all of you to have a look. That's pretty much all for my talk, but please refer to the paper for more details, especially on our method and results. In case you have any more questions, feel free to reach out to me. Thank you for listening.